Hi, this is a skeptical consult with Dr. Stephen Novella. I'm going to talk about boosting the immune system. This is a very popular topic now because we're in the middle of a pandemic, the COVID-19 uh, disease caused by the, the COVID, the novel coronavirus. Uh, so it, there's a lot of interest in people saying, well, how can I protect myself? Because there anything I can do to strengthen my immune system so I can fight off the infection? I could go shopping and pick up toilet paper you know, without catching COVID-19. So I'm going to talk about what works, what doesn't work, and some basic concepts. So first of all, the, the whole notion of boosting the immune system isn't really a scientific concept. Um, it isn't uh, based on any science. It's not something that doctors talk about. It's not a term that's used in mainstream medicine or mainstream science. The reason for that is because the immune system is horrifically complex. We know a lot about it, but even as much as we know, uh, we can't really even predict how necessarily what the net effect is going to be if we influence one little piece of the immune system, like if this marker goes up or that, or that hormone goes up or down, what is the net effect of that? It's too complex for us to even predict that. Uh, you know, biological organisms generally are complex, dynamic, homeostatic things, right? There's a, a massive web of interrelationship, and you can't always predict what's going to happen if you pull on one of those threads. Uh, and so the immune system also, again, it's, it's homeostatic. It, it occurs in a balance. And that balance has been tweaked by hundreds of millions of years of evolution. The idea that you're going to make it work better, better than evolution has been able to make it work by simply doing one little trick or taking one supplement or whatever is, is kind of, you know, it's hubris. It's, it's silly. Uh, what people often mean when they say boost the immune system is that they're increasing some marker of immune activity. They're increasing immune activity. But that's not necessarily a good thing. Again, we already have, the again, in a healthy state, unless you have a disease, um, in, a, in the healthy state, our immune system is already at the optimal balance between fighting off infections without destroying your own tissue or causing negative effects. You know, we also, you know, everyone knows that inflammation is a bad thing, right? If you have inflammation in your body, it causes damage. Uh, and th that's why we take anti-inflammatories for certain things. Uh, but inflammation is immune system activity. We need inflammation to fight off infections, but we're always sort of walking that fine line between just enough to fight off an invader, but not enough that we cause problems with our own tissue, with our own body. And sometimes we have to accept some negative effects in order to get the positive effects. Again, it's a delicate homeostatic balance. You mess with that, you have to have a good idea what you're doing, and you need to do clinical trials, right? In order to really figure out what the net effect of anything that we do to alter immune function, you need to do carefully controlled, you know, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trials where we follow net outcomes, net clinical outcomes, to know what the ultimate effect is. If you don't do that and you're trying to just guess because some cell activity in a Petri dish increases, you're you know, probably more likely to be causing harm than good. The chances of you actually improving or boosting your immune system is pretty close to zero. But having said that, there are things you can do to improve your ability to fight off an infection. And these all amount to basically just staying healthy. Uh, you need to have good nutrition, good overall nutrition. So one thing, one way to conceptualize this is that your immune system is rallying all of your body's resources as much as it can in order to vigorously fight off an infection. And so you need to make sure that it has all of the things that it needs to do that. In order to optimize your uh, immune system's ability to fight infection, you basically just need to prevent anything from decreasing its ability to function. So one thing that would do that would be a malnutrition or some specific nutritional deficit. So if you want to optimize your immune system, then just make sure you have a good, well-rounded diet. We know that taking supplements doesn't replace a good diet. So if you have a healthy diet and you are generally healthy, you don't need to take supplements. Uh, there may be some specific situations where people have increased supplementation needs, increased nutritional needs, like extreme exercise, recovering from trauma or surgery, being pregnant. 
situations where your body's on their its resources are being tapped even more. And so those are situations where we do supplement routinely, but also you may have a condition uh, or uh, a situation in which, you know, it's a dietary restriction, et cetera, where you may be uh, either in the low range or even deficient in a specific nutrient, and that would need to be supplemented. How do you know about that? It's simple. Go to your doctor, you get a blood test. If you're low in B12 or whatever, they'll give you targeted supplementation. So I prescribe targeted supplementation all the time. It's the right thing to do, but it should be based on actual evidence. Routine supplementation, just supplementing blindly or taking mega doses, thinking that, well, if some is good, more is better. These things don't work. They're more likely to cause harm than good. They're just generally a waste and not necessary. So evidence-based targeted supplementation is good. Having an overall varied healthful diet is good. But there is no magical supplement out there that is going to boost your immune system. It just doesn't exist. Another important thing is getting a good night's sleep. Uh, There's good evidence. There's lots of evidence that if you have good sleep, you are more likely to fight off an infection. Your chances of getting sick and the severity of the illness will be worse if you are sleep deprived. I'm not exactly sure why that is. One hypothesis is that Again, your body is fighting off an infection. It's using all of your resources. When you're sleeping, you're resting, your body has more resources that it can allocate to fighting off the infection. And therefore, most of your immune activity to fight off the infection is while you're sleeping. So if you're getting plenty of sleep, you'll, you'll fight off the infection better. There may be other reasons as well. You know, sleep, is, our, our immune systems vary based upon our sleep-wake cycle. It's very complicated. It's, the immune system is very complicated. Its regulation is very complicated. But we do know that sleep deprivation is bad. Getting good sleep is very important to maximize your body's ability to vigorously fight off infection. Another thing that you can do is to reduce your stress, both physical and psychological stress. These uh, tend to reduce your body's ability to fight off infection. Again, if you just think about it in terms of your body wants to marshal all of its resources to fight off the infection, anything else uh, that diverts from that, like physical or psychological stress, Uh, can reduce your body's ability to fight maximally. Uh, There's also a connection between psychological stress and corticosteroid release, which is an immunosuppressant, and that may reduce the uh, immune activity in your body as well. Uh, Not exactly clear how much of a factor that, that is, but it seems to be a factor. And there's one medical intervention that has been proven to be extremely effective in enhancing your immune system's ability to fight off specific infections, and that's vaccines. If there is one real immune booster, it is vaccination. Uh, With a vaccine, your body gets exposed to specific either uh, uh, killed virus or killed um, organisms or pieces of them, proteins from them, something that will uh, allow your immune system to mount an immune response against it, against it and remember it. Your immune system has memory. And then the next time it encounters it, it will have a quicker and more robust immune activity. The memory cells in your immune system will know how to marshal an immediate response. So vaccines work. Now, there isn't a vaccine currently for the novel coronavirus or cov 2 Uh, It'll probably take a year to 18 months from this point in time before we have one. But it's really important to, for example, get your flu vaccine. Because guess what? If you have another infection, like the flu, you are more susceptible to getting COV-2. Because again, your body is splitting. Now it's, it's already fighting off one disease. It has less, fewer resources available to fight off a second one. So keeping yourself generally healthy keeping up to date on your vaccine schedule, avoiding contact with people who are known to be sick. So, you know, keeping yourself healthy and free from other infections, even basic things like the common cold or the flu, will also help you fight off the the COVID-2 or the COVID-19 disease. Okay, what are some things that don't work? Uh, And these are the things that are being touted out there as ways of boosting your immune system. So routine supplementation. Again, just taking supplements or taking mega doses of supplements to think that you need more than what is adequate, right? So if you have a good healthful diet and you're, you've taken care of any specific supplemental needs that you need, but just taking extra or taking more 
will help make your immune system supercharged. You'll have a super immune system if you eat some super food. None of that's true. There's no evidence that it's true. There's no reason to think that it's true. It doesn't even make basic sense. Another common one is antioxidants. This is a, a, one of the most common scams you know, of the supplement industry. Again, the oxidative stress in the body is a complex dynamic homeostatic system. We evolved a balance between oxidative stress and natural antioxidants. The natural antioxidants in your body are a thousand times stronger than anything you're going to take in a supplement or in a food. So if, you, if a little bit more an antioxidant activity in the body were a good thing, why wouldn't we have already evolved it? We would have. That's the answer. We didn't because our, we have a balance, and that balance is there for a reason. For example, parts of our immune system actually use uh, oxygen-free radicals to kill invading organisms. So if you take a lot of antioxidants, if anything, you'll be impairing the immune system. You'll be taking away one of the weapons from your own immune system that it uses to fight off invaders. Don't mess with the balance if, you are, you know, if you're a healthy individual. Uh, it, disease states are different. Things are, by definition, have gone awry and we try to fix them. But if you're generally healthy, you know, just again, have it be, be overall healthy, have a good diet. You don't need to mess with these complex systems to think that you're going to improve it. I'll just mention that there's no herbal product out there that has been proven to improve or help uh, immune activity. Uh, again, m most of the ones that claim that they boost the immune system are based upon in vitro studies. So again, you're looking at cells in a petri dish or, dish or some marker of immune activity, and they're interpreting an increase in some marker of immune activity as boosting the immune system. But we don't know. We can't even say what the net effect of that is reliably. And if you are increasing immune activity, that could be a bad thing. That's not the same thing as improving immune activity, but often that is, that is confused. Pretty much anything else out there that you may encounter as claiming to boost the immune system is not true. So don't believe it. Sticking needles in your body, taking homeopathy, all the usual snake oil and crank treatments, they do not boost the immune system. So don't rely upon them. So what's the bottom line from all of this? Don't get distracted by claims of boosting the immune system from the things that we know work. Avoid exposure to anyone who is sick or is known to have COVID-19. Stay healthy. Keep up to date on your vaccines. Have a good diet. Get plenty of sleep. Try to engage in some kind of stress reduction. If you're all anxious and nervous, do things to relax and to make yourself feel less anxious. And don't believe the snake oil hype. It's not true. It's just a way of taking your money. It's a distraction from the things that we know work. Focus on those things things. I hope you found this healthy, uh, helpful. Stay healthy. Stay safe out there.